All right, everybody. It's the last day before spring break begins, and we are wrapping up our section on rocks and soil for science. Today, you'll have a text article to read and then answer questions. You'll need to create a Google Doc and answer the eight questions, and make sure that you restate the questions in your answers and turn in the assignment when you finish. Now, obviously there is a joke of the week as well, but I'm not even gonna go there. I just wanna show you first where your questions are and then where the text is. So the questions are the first PDF, and I think I said this before, but I'll tell you guys again, I highly recommend downloading each of these. It just makes it easier if you are trying to open it. I'm gonna open it in a brand new, um, brand new tab. So for your questions, you are going to be um, doing some text-based evidence questions about the types of soil. Hopefully you all enjoyed going out, finding some soil, doing different activities with them, and, and putting them on the flip grid. So now it's time to make sure that we summarize and recap everything that you've learned. So answer these questions after you read the passage. Remember to begin your answer by restating part of the question. Use direct evidence from the text and explain your thinking. Your first five questions are very much more about key ideas and details, so you're really going to need to use direct evidence for these especially. So for number one, it says according to the first passage of or paragraph of the text, why is soil important? Number two, explain why many living things cannot survive in sand. Number three, describe how silt is formed. Number four, describe how humus is formed. And then number five, list the four types of soils. So for four out of these five, you really need to include a good amount of detail. Um, number five, you're just listing them. So you would put something like the four types of soils are, and then list the names of them. All right, when we move on to the second page though, these questions, you'll still need some direct evidence from the text, but these questions are more about um, vocabulary definitions that are important to know, as well as the type of structure of a text. So again, you're going to be paying attention to the word soil. You want that definition. So you need to really go back in the text and find the actual definition that the text gives you and then pay attention to how this passage is organized. So is it chronological, cause and effect, comparison or contrast, description, or problem and solution? But with this one, you do need to give evidence and then explain. This one, number seven, you definitely need a race response. So you need to restate the question and answer it, then cite your textual evidence and explain how that evidence supports your answer. And for number eight, this is where you have to give the main key idea, the central idea that the author wants you to understand from this text. And again, you need to use evidence from the text and then also support your reasoning with some explanations. So again, number eight is also going to be a race response. All right, once you have this opened as well as the text open. You can follow along with me as I read the text. Every so often I will be pausing to give you some guidance on questions that you can answer. Obviously the last two I'm going to highly recommend you wait until the end to answer. All right so if we go back to Google Classroom and we click on your actual text I'm going to open this one up in a new window too. And I'm gonna begin. Rocks and minerals passage, types of soil. When you think of soil, you probably think of the brown stuff that your parents use in your backyard garden. Soil is much more than just a gardening tool. Soil is a mixture of minerals, water, air, and a bunch of decaying materials. Soil is created when water, wind, and ice break down rocks over many years. Soil is very important for plants on earth and it is a home for other living things. It cleans the air and water. 
Soil is a building block for both natural and human construction projects. Soil matters. It is the foundation of life. All right. So when you have both these PDFs open and your Google Doc to put your answers in, you definitely have an answer for number one. We now know why soil is important. And you also have the answer for number six. You should now have the meaning and definition of the term soil. And if I were going to restate these, um, for number one, I would put soil is important because, and then I put my answer, if it'll eventually load up. Sorry guys, my computer's going a little slow today. Soil is important because according to the text, it states, and then you can actually say what it states. Um, for numbers, sorry, two, I don't know why my computer's doing this, but anyway, for number six, the term soil means, and then give me the definition. Hopefully this helps you a little bit when it comes to having to um, restate your questions first. If it helps you guys, if you do have a printer at home, you can also print this out and highlight as I go along too. All right, let's get back to the text. Paragraph two. There are four main types of soil. Humus, sand, clay, and silt. Soil is placed into groups based on how big or small its pieces are. The size of its pieces determine how it behaves. For example, some soils hold a lot of water, which makes them good for growing plants. The different types of soil can be found in different parts of the world. Some places have more than one type of soil. Sometimes people mix different types of soil together on purpose to fit their needs. The type of soil, or soils, found in an area has a big impact on life in that area. The soil decides what plants can grow, what animals live nearby, and what resources are available. All right, after paragraph two, I definitely heard an answer for number five. So you should now be able to list the four types of soils. Again, if I were going to restate that, I would put something like the four types of soils are called, and then I would list them because that's all it's asking me to do. Back to paragraph three. If you've ever been to the beach, you probably know a lot about sand. Sand is a grainy soil with big spaces of air between the grains. If you rub sand together between your hands, it feels gritty. The big spaces of air in sand let water move through sand easily. Not many living things can live in sand because it does not hold water very well. However, sand is helpful if you mix it with tighter soils because it loosens them up to make them better for supporting living things. Okay, you definitely heard an answer for number two. So if you were going to restate that, you would put something like, many living things cannot survive in sand because... Okay, so right now we have answers for one, two, five, and six that you have now heard me read aloud. Okay, paragraph four. Silt is an itsy, bitsy, teeny, tiny version of sand. Sand feels grainy, but silt feels like flour if you touch it. Running water, like rivers and streams, carries silt from place to place. Eventually, the silt is left at the bottom of a bigger body of water as sediment. Sediment is a fancy word for the dirt, rocks, and other material pieces, like shells or mud. Sediment collects at the bottom of a body of water, like a lake or the ocean. After many years, pieces of sediment press together to make rocks. Do you know which top type of rock sediment forms? Well, we learned that in our last few now. All right, so now you have an answer for number three. Describe how silt is formed. So for number three, you could put something like silt is formed by, and then describe that process. 
Next paragraph, I believe this is paragraph five. Clay is a type of soil that is even smaller than salt. There is not much space between the particles in clay. This makes clay feel sticky when it gets wet. When clay is dry, it breaks easily and forms into clumps. Clay is helpful to the plants and animals that live around it because it holds water and minerals very well. It does not let water go very easily. Like clay, humus is very helpful to helpful for living things. Humus is a loose soil that is made out of living things that died and decomposed for many years. Humus is the soil that you probably think of when you think of gardening. Humus is dark, soft, and crumbles easily. Like the core of the earth has layers, the soil sitting on the earth's surface has layers too. Humus usually makes up the top two layers of soil on earth. All right, you just heard me give you the answer for number four. Describe how humus is formed. So you would put something like humus is formed by, and then tell the process. Now we have answers for numbers one through six. And as I mentioned, you definitely want to save those last two for the end. So I'm going to finish reading this first before I give you some additional guidance. You might think the soil underneath your feet is not important, but soil is needed for life on Earth. Many plants and animals need soil to live. Many of the buildings you live and play in are built on soil. Soil also cleans the air you breathe and the water you drink. Take a closer look at the soil the next time you are standing outside. You might be able to see for yourself that soil is more than just brown stuff to be used in a garden. And here's a fast fact. A little bit of sand is usually added to humus to make it the perfect soil for plant growth. The soil that is used for growing plants is called potting soil, which a lot of times we use potting soil when we use um, pots to grow plants in. All right, so when you look at numbers seven and eight, I want to remind you again that sometimes these texts can be definitely more than one type of structure, but you did hear um, about the different types of soil. You heard about how some of them are formed, and then you also heard about how they are helpful. So if you're going, whichever one you were going to pick, um, just keep in mind that you didn't hear as much of me telling you how they're alike or different necessarily, and you didn't hear as much of how there's different problems and how they are solved using soil. So I hope that that gives you a slight hint on some of the ones that you could or should be using for number seven. And then for number eight, with the key idea that the author wants readers to understand, well, my first suggestion is always to look at a couple things. Look at the title, and then reread the first paragraph and the last paragraph. So when you read this first paragraph, it first introduces you to what soil is, but again, it does talk a lot about how soil is very important for plants on earth and for other living things. And then down here, it also says kind of the same thing, it gives some more reasons for why it's important. So I hope that this helps when it comes to um, identifying how the answers number seven and eight. Remember though that they should be race response answers. So for number seven, I might start out with the passage is organized in a blank structure, right? Then you want to give some evidence. As the text states, and then you could, um, or you can put a good example of textual evidence to support this is, and then you can put, um, that would be your evidence. This evidence shows it is this text structure because. So that could be for number seven. And then for number eight, the key, again, number eight is all about the key detail, or the key idea, sorry. So the key idea that the author wants 
greater to understand from this text is, and then you can tell us what's the key idea, a piece, um, you could put according to the text, The author states, and then you could put the piece of evidence, and then you could put this shows that the key idea of the text is, so you're going to restate that original because, and then tell me how that shows that. So again, everybody, um, I just want to remind you that it is so important that you really use these videos as resources because I'm really trying to make sure that I'm giving you guidance just like I would in a class lesson in class in person with you all. I hope that this helps you. Make sure that you follow along. And if I don't see you or talk to you, I hope you have an awesome spring break and we will talk to you soon.